Hey guys, welcome back for part two of my nursing must-haves. If you missed part one, I will leave a link down below where you guys can go check out what products I have already discussed. If you didn't see part one and you're watching this first, I am going on my third child. I have gone through a ton of nursing ups and downs that I have proudly overcome, but I have also tried out a ton of products. So I'm just going over the ones that I find to be completely essential for nursing moms. So getting right into it, the next thing that I'm going to talk about is nursing pads. You are going to leak. If this is your first child, you do not realize how much you're going to leak. Everything makes you leak. Children crying, I mean just sitting there doing nothing. If you're an overproducer, even if you're not an overproducer, you're still going to leak. When you're nursing your child on the right side, the left side will probably be leaking. So pads are a must have. Now these are disposable pads which means one time use, then it goes in the trash can. I've never cared for these. The only reason I have them is because I got so many of them free from just buying stuff when I've been expecting. They are very, very thin and discreet. You do not see them through your shirt. Um, they absorb well, but you are going to change them out a lot. And I'm just not big into the, dis the disposable thing. Like, I don't like just throwing stuff away and adding to the landfill when I can just use something that's reusable. And to be quite honest, these weren't that comfortable either for me. So what I preferred to use is reusable cloth pads. Now, these, these are some cheapies that I bought. And they're not bad. They are super duper thin. They don't show. They also don't absorb as much, so you're going to be changing them much more often, which really isn't a big deal if you have a decent stash of these. These, however, um, are like the super absorbency nursing pads. They are much thicker and they just hold a lot more. If you are wearing something super duper thin, you might see an outline of these, word of caution. But most of the time I did not, so it was not that big of a deal. And if I was wearing something really thin, I just used these. Um, if you are gonna go the reusable way, I highly suggest a well-made good nursing pad. The cheap ones are what they are. They are cheap. The more expensive ones are generally more expensive for a reason because they usually have more layers and they're made of better fabrics like bamboo or hemp, which are much, much more absorbent than just cloth. So nursing pads, no matter what you choose, very much a necessity. Uh, next thing is nipple cream. I generally make my own for when I am at home and I will do a video on how to make your own nipple cream out of coconut oil and natural products that is good for you, good for your skin, you can use it on things other than your nipples, completely safe for baby and no chemicals or toxins. But when I was on the go I would carry something like this in my diaper bag. Now Melanosol. I think I said that right. I did not like this. It is super hard to get out of the bottle because of how thick it is for one and it did not go on easy. Like you know, your nipples are sensitive. It is a very sensitive area. You don't want something that you are like messing with even more on something that already hurts. You just want something that's going to go on nice and smooth and be done with it. This stuff is just so thick and greasy and I, I just... This was not for me. Some people might like this product, but I did not. 
The Medela Tender Care Lanolin is what I preferred for when I was on the go. It's, it's really thin. It comes out easy. It goes on nice and smooth. You have no issues. You are not fighting with it. You smooth it on and you are done and you are good to go. And that is the end of that. This is what I prefer for on the go, but when I'm at home, I prefer coconut oil, my own homemade concoction. But you're gonna want something regardless of what it is. Next thing I'm gonna talk about is a breast pump. This is essential, especially if you are a working mom or you are going to be sending baby to grandparents' house or a sitter for anything and they need to feed them with a bottle. Well, let me take that back. You could manually express, which I ended up doing a lot because I hated cleaning pump parts. It's terrible. I don't have a dishwasher. Everything is hand wash. And the last thing I wanted to do when I was already terribly sleep deprived was wash pump parts. So I generally ended up manually expressing. But this is the Medela double pump. It had three speeds, low, medium, and high. I found it to be loud and to make weird sounds and my daughter did not like it whenever I would turn it on when she was by it. So I used it a little bit, but not that much. These are pretty much a must have for most people. I also did not have to send my daughter anywhere. We didn't have any family to watch her or we didn't send her to daycare because I'm a stay at home mom. So she pretty much drank from the source. But I did use this when I started building my supply before I figured out manually expressing was more for me. But to go along with the pump, you're going to need storage bags. And you can get these anywhere. I mean, there's tons of different companies that make them. Has a place for your name, date, how much milk is in there. This holds up to five ounces. You just seal it, throw it in the freezer, and you're good to go. But storage containers are definitely a necessity when you are trying to build a supply. Next thing I'm gonna talk about is what I call milk boosters. And these are products that are generally considered to help build your milk supply or increase your milk supply. One that I use is nutritional yeast powder, also referred to as brewer's yeast. It's just this yellow loose powder that you can sprinkle on food or in a juice or milk or whatever. It does, you could even put this in capsules. If you buy empty capsules, you could fill capsules with this and take it that way if you want to. Uh, it does have a slight cheesy flavor. So <laughs> whenever we would eat like pasta or anything, I would just add this to it. Yeah, this is something that I used pretty much every day to help increase my milk supply. If it worked, I don't know, but I never had an issue, so that's good and it's really good for you if even if it doesn't work it has tons of vitamins and things so that is one thing I use another thing that I included in my daily um, diet was milled flaxseed you can also find whole flaxseed but when you have the milled flax it absorbs in your body easier rather than having an entire seed in there and this you can add to cereal, you can add it to oatmeal. Uh, I put it in my smoothies every morning, or you could just sprinkle it on top of other food. There really is no taste to me. So this was a great product. Some other things you can use, fenugreek. I know a lot of people use fenugreek capsules. Red raspberry tea, or the capsules if you don't want to drink the tea. Also, steel cut oats. I know a lot of people say oatmeal, oh, eat oatmeal, eat oatmeal. But when you go to the store and you buy like Quaker Oats or whatever, that is so far processed that 
you're missing the original grain. What you want is closest to the natural grain as possible. So I always bought steel cut oats and you can make oatmeal out of that or you could just add it to other things like oatmeal cookies. And there's a ton of things that you can try to use to boost your supply if you need to. One other thing I'm gonna mention, if you're super paranoid like me and you are constantly worrying and keeping yourself up at night on if your child is getting enough milk. What I did was I ended up going and buying a baby scale because I was so worried about this and it bothered me so much. And I would weigh my daughter before she nursed and then after and I would see how many ounces she gained to see how much she was getting. So that's just a tip if you are crazy like me and you just need to see that they're getting enough food. Um, I highly suggest a baby scale and you can find those online anywhere. But look at reviews because you want a good baby scale that's going to show you ounces and not just pounds. And then the last thing I'm going to talk about is you really need a good support system. Whether it's a group, like a local breastfeeding or mother's group, um, a friend, a family member, a good husband, a lactation consultant, or even if you can't find any of those things, a good book. You really need people around you that are going to support your decision. There are going to be a lot of people that say, oh, why don't you just use formula? It's so much easier. Or, you know, how long are you going to breastfeed? I mean, I heard so many comments. It, it was unreal. But um, I was confident in my decision. And I had an amazing husband who 110% supported me in my choice to nurse for however long I wanted to nurse. I also, I did see a lactation consultant when I was having issues and the lactation consultants weren't even able to help me. So I had to go a step higher and see an IBCLC, which I believe stands for International Board Certified Lactation Consultant, which is not just an LC. So they are super helpful if you're having issues. I highly suggest finding one. Now, if you don't have any of those, a good book is sometimes all you need. And the one that I always suggest for nursing moms is The Womanly Art of Breastfeeding, which is by the Leche League. This thing was like my Bible. When I was up late at night and I'm like, oh, I had some crazy question on my mind, I would look in here and more often than not, I would find an answer. This thing is just full of information, of different stories, um, giving you support when you need it. Especially in those first three months when you don't know how you're going to make it, this thing is super helpful. Check your local library, most libraries carry them or they can order it in for you. And if you can't find it or you don't have a library by you, look online and I'm sure you can find a used copy. I mean, this thing to me was invaluable. But I think that is all that I have for you guys for my part two. And that wraps up my breastfeeding must-haves. If you guys have any questions or comments, please just leave me a message down below and I will definitely answer you. If you have any questions about any of the products that I mentioned or even things that I didn't mention because I've tried a lot more than what I've shown you. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out part one if you haven't already and I will see you again next time. Bye.